Hello guys, before the tutorial will start I just got a little information. I reduced all courses again for uh, $30 so you can get them now. Just go on my homepage and go to the loading tab and there are all the links. The links to my homepage is down in the description. And now and enjoy the tutorial. Hello guys and welcome to this next tutorial. So I let you see pretty many virus and medical stuff around here so I want to join but I want to make it a little bit more abstract so we will get something <laughs> like this here. Maybe a, a bacteria, a virus, something like that. And I think we should get started. So first of all, create a new Houdini scene. Let's just simply save that to the desktop. And we will begin with a simple geometry container. And let's call this Geo V. Let's make it round and black, for example. And dive inside. First of all, we will start with a simple popnet. So to create particles. And we will dive inside. When we press the play button nothing will happen because we got a source first input so pop source but we don't need this we will delete it and we will switch to a pop location so this will emit particles on a location so for example here zero 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 and we will use that for the start Let's rearrange this a little bit here. And first of all, I want to emit the particles only on the first frame. So we'll go on to our pop location, go to birth, and we'll write into the impulse activation $FF equal equals 1. So we will only emit particles once. Let's disable the constant activation and give it like 25 points. And now you can see we will emit 25 points at the first frame. Cool. That's for that. But now we want something like a splitting growth. And first of all, I want to set the stream here to main, just call it main. And we will split the stream in a second, but first of all, let's get the variance here down to 111, or 01 here on the variance. Impulse count 25. Let's just start only with one particle, so we got only one particle here. Let's just set this to zero, so the particle will stay in the center, and we will create a pop wind or something like that later. Now we want to split the stream here, but first of all we need to create a group, pop group. Let's place the pop group down here, and with the pop group we will get it to the split, let's call it split, and let's enable the group. But I only want particles every 24 frame in this group. So we will use a simple expression here, add frame, then the percentage sign, it's a modulo function, 24, so every 24th frame, and this needs to be equal to zero. 
And I think that should work. Then we will get a um, pop replicate, place it down. But I want to use the reference stream, pipe it in here, and the stream I will call it main. And we will add the velocity something like that. Now we can use a shape. So I want to replicate the points from point. And of course you can add noise, something like that, but I think that's alright. And we need to enable the split group here. And I think we get three particles for every splitting and let's have a look. We will get something like this. So this will get pretty heavy over time, so it's, it's like a pretty strong exponential growth over the particle count over the time. And for example, I will stop right here. And I will use a pop wind. Let's get a little bit amplitude in here to just get a little bit of variance. For example, you can go way higher with this and try out different settings. So something like this, that's pretty cool too. Let's just view this here. Let's get a trail node here and we will connect them as a polygon. And the cool thing is with the polygon connection we can dial the tray length up and disable the close rows and we will get something like this. So let's have a look, let's make the background black and disable the grid and we will get something like this. So for example a pretty organic virus structure. But now I want to mesh that whole thing. So maybe around here. First of all we need to resample it. Let's get a resample out and the default settings are totally fine. Then we will place down a wireframe node. <laughs> okay, that looks pretty nice too. So you can go with something like that. 0 0.01, yeah, let's make it a little bit bigger. So point, something like that. So 0 0.05, uh, 2, sorry. And we will place down a VDB from Polygon. And I think that might be a good resolution. No. Let's make 0 0.01. Yeah, that's way better. Then we will make a convert VDB and we will convert um, them back to polygons. After the convert to VDB we can place a smooth to get a nice smooth surface. For example we can get the filter quality down to 1 and the strength down to 50 or 500, something like that, and you will get a really yeah, smooth looking surface. So we will got 900,000 polygons, that's not much, but it looks pretty nice. Cool. I will rearrange that here a little bit. Get a null here and call it out V. And in the end, we will place a material node, so R as mat, something like that. Now you can play with the settings and so on. And of course, we will do a little bit of rendering now. Let me just have a look here. Okay. 
get an ID for example so you can transfer some attributes if you want to yeah let's just do this I will use the ID here attribute transfer and I will fit them so you can download this asset here the link will be in the description that was the ID okay nice that's fitted and I want to transfer the ID back onto the points okay cool and now let's have a look at the output and we will get something like this then I will place down an attribute blur where is it? attribute blur yes Actually, blur and we can blur our ID, not a position. I want to blur our ID. Okay, that does not a good job. Let me just leave it like so and try to get a cool look out of this. Dive up and place down a camera. Then we will need a material network and a rod network. Let's color these in red for redshift, RS mat and the RS out. Dive to the side and create a new material. So RS material builder, RSV for example. Let's just copy it and paste it in here. Dive inside. And what we can do, for example, get a color here, color user data, and this was the ID. Let's just connect this to the ramp here and connect it to the diffuse. Then in the out network or in the ROP network, we'll place an Redshift render node and call the camera camera still oops not stall zero zero one okay the camera is set let's activate a simple global illumination and we will need light for that mm, RS light dome Zero, zero, 001 cool let's just get a quick HDRI here and enable the rendering Let's disable the background and we will get something like this. So I really don't like this RAM stuff here. For example we can use an RS curvature. Let's look at the curvature here. And look at the concave. Okay they are pretty really cool. Let's use the um, concave for now get a ramp so we can ramp the concave so you can just ramp pretty much anything so you can ramp a noise or the curvature or an incoming texture and we can put this into the diffuse slot 
to the surface. And let's have a look here what we got. We can make it red for example, blue, green, whatever you want. Just try to find a cool look, so that's... Let's go with... For example, you can use uh, a subsurface material. I think that's uh, a pretty cool uh, material for kind of bacteria or uh, medical structures. But... Yeah, why not? Are this material? Let's use a simple here, and that's layer one. It's activated. Surface color. I think that looks not bad, but I think we need to turn turn down a little bit the values here. For example, something like this. And because we are in a really tiny scale, we need of course depth of field. So let's enable the depth of field and get a quick bokeh image. And for example, a longer focal length and full HD. Let's just disable this one here. That's that was just a test. And re enable the IPR, and we will get something like this. Of course, we need to adjust our focus. Now dial down. Just go to fix scaling to get this a little bit faster. And now of course you can play with the materials, play with the lights. I will let render this art and play a little bit more and I will show you on a frame in the end. And I hope you like this little tutorial. And I will see you in the next one. Have a nice day and stay safe.